words with me, man of sorrows, man of sorrows.
Let's sing these words from Scripture together. Where can I go from your spirit? My name is Sylvester from Kenya in Nairobi. For the Lutheran Church in Kenya, I'm responsible for projects in the, in the church, for coordination of groups that come, missions, for coordination of all our projects within the church. We've really seen a lot. We have seen the blessings of the Lord through the mission teams that have been coming to Kenya. Many people have come to Christ. Many people have received their sight, not only the physical sight, but also the spiritual sight. Many people have joined our churches, and we really want to thank that uh, through these missions, we have been able to, to see 
people having joy again and people coming to Christ. It's our commission, what Christ has commissioned us to make a bigger heaven by bringing more to his kingdom. And that statement, I got it from you guys in, in Salem. Thank you. Asante sana. What you are doing is very encouraging and you should continue doing this as we continue partnering in the ministry in Kenya. I once felt that I was on my own, but now I'm encouraged and uh, I'm encouraged with this partnership that now I'm not alone. We are together as, uh, as partners and I uh, can see that we will go far. God bless you so much. I just love to see the amazing things that have been happening around the world. Like Sylvester's story, that is just incredible to hear the work that's being done in Kenya. That the gospel is being spread through meeting physical needs, but then there's the opportunity to meet the spiritual need. And I just think that's so awesome. And I wanted to let you know tonight, if this is your first time attending or whether you're a regular here, you have an opportunity to make a difference in people's lives, just like Sylvester mentioned. You can do that by in the top right hand corner, there's a button that says give. And what you're giving goes to 100% of it goes to providing cataract surgeries in Kenya. And then through that, meeting the physical needs, just like Sylvester was mentioning, spiritual needs are being met as well. And like I said, you can be a part of that just by clicking on the give button and you have a choice of how many people you want to give cataract surgeries to. And that way we can also share the message of Jesus Christ with them. So thank you if you're wanting to do that tonight. If you want to pray about it and, and do it some other time, you can do that any time there. Well, tonight we're in week two of a six-week study on the Lord's Prayer. And I'm really glad that you're here tonight. I always want to say welcome if you're a first-time person or if you're a regular person again. You're always welcome to be here. And we are glad that you are joining us. So when we're talking about the Lord's Prayer, last week we covered the first part, which was about our Father in heaven. And we talked about the idea of our, and the idea that my God is just not my God, but he's, he's, all our, he's our God. He's not just your God. He's not just my God. He's not just this guy's God, but he is all our gods. And so when we pray to him, we don't only pray for our needs, he's also taken into the consideration all of his children that are praying to him. With the word children there brings me to the second point where we talked about father. We don't just have a God that just set the time clock, let us go, and it has no involvement anymore in this earthly life. But in fact, instead, we have a God who wants to be involved, that wants to have a relationship with us. And Jesus says we can use the word father or in other words, instead of the word father, you can substitute the word papa in there or daddy, like that, that intimate term of endearment. And so that was the second part we talked about last week. And then we concluded last week with the idea in heaven. So we don't just have a God that's in a close personal relationship with us, which is really cool because he is the God of everything we see, the entire universe and everything in it. So we have an amazing God that is over everything, and yet he still wants a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you and with me. And I think we just have an awesome, awesome God for that. So tonight, week two, we're diving into what is deemed the first petition. Last week, it's kind of called an introduction, and we dive into what Martin Luther calls petitions now. And we're, the first one speaks of, hallowed be your name. And we're going to talk about kind of what the, what's that mean? What does the word hallowed mean for first? And what, what does it mean? Hallowed be your name, Father. And so that's where we're going tonight. Now, I want to remind you, if, if there's any week that you're not able to catch this Bible study, one, it's going to be in the notes tab that you can share that with a friend right now, which is directly below the chat button. And there's a thing that says notes. There's a link in there that'll take you to the full video. Also... The following day, so on Wednesdays, I send an email out with just a little recap of the study as well as the full one in case you missed it. So if you're not on our newsletters yet, I'd like you to click the banner that's right below my picture right here 
and you can sign up and then you will get a newsletter each Wednesday that's going to have information, recaps, full Bible studies, all that. But we want to stay in contact with you. So either click the banner below or if you're already signed into the chat under our account, we have your email address and you will be on that newsletter list as well. So before we get started tonight, I'd love to pray for us and then we'll dive into the word. Father God, I thank you tonight for for who you are. You're a God who, while is Lord of all the universe, you're also a Father who is really close to us and wants us to pray to him, to talk to him. And so God, tonight as we find out what it is to be hallow, to hallow your name, God, I pray that you would be with us, that we would grow in our relationship with you, and Lord, that we would grow in our relationship with one another. And God, that we would hold your name above all names. I pray this all through Jesus' holy name. Amen. So tonight we're diving into Hallowed Be Thy Name. So first, I want to start off start off by defining what does hallowed or hallowed mean. And the way it's it's been defined between messages I've heard and what the dictionary defines it as is that which is set aside or that which is esteemed or that that is holy. So those are a few different definitions, but they all kind of form together, meaning that it's something or someone that you set aside or set above. Think think of it kind of like a pedestal. What is what is something you hold up high? What is something that's a top of your priority list? What what is something that's constantly or someone who is constantly on your mind? And so that's what we're talking about with the idea of hallowed. And and so we hallow God's name. We hold his name up above all other names, and we protect that holy name. You see, Martin Luther in his catechism talks about God's name is always holy. That doesn't change. But we do not always esteem it. We do not always hold it up as holy. In fact, oftentimes we fall short in life because of sin, and oftentimes we misuse his name. And, and we don't respect the name that is holy. Because God, as the creator of the universe, deserves. He, I, mean, I mean, it's his. We are the creation. He is the creator. It, it belongs to him all the honor and glory. And so it is our responsibility to hold up that honor that belongs to his name. If we think about it, uh, I'm thinking about our earthly families here. One thing that... that I try to keep in the back of my mind a lot of times, especially when I was growing up, that if I did something wrong, sometimes that would reflect my family, my parents. And so thinking about it there, I I wanted to, and I I still to this day, don't want to disrespect my family name at all. In fact, I want to hold my family name up, as as I'm sure many of you do too. You want to keep your family's name as a very, very honorable name. And God wants the same thing. He wants his name to be holy because it is. And oftentimes, Christians can oftentimes get a bad rap for something that somebody's done that they haven't held God's name up in a holy way. And so we want to protect his name in that way to to make sure that it is above all and that that we are his children representing him, that we are a reflection of him. And so we hold it as holy. You see, as I talked about er- earlier, hallowing something is something that you're thinking about all the time. So so let me ask you, what is, what is constantly on your mind? What are you thinking about each day? I know there are times where I am not thinking about God all the time. And in fact, I'm thinking about just things that, you know, provide satisfaction now. But can go away in an instant. You see, things that we normally hallow when we fall short do not give us the ability to be eternally thankful or to give us what we want forever. You see, one thing that I love love to do is I love to go to baseball games. I, I love to watch a lot of games. I love to spend time wa- following the stats of the game, stuff like that. And and sometimes I can 
hollow that game a lot because I love the game and it's what I'm thinking about. I think I spend time understanding my team and I spend time listening to it, watching to it, but sooner or later, eventually my team's going to disappoint me. It's the Chicago Cubs, so while last season they didn't disappoint me, there have been plenty of seasons where they have disappointed me. And there are times that I have just really, I, I mean, I love baseball, I do. It's kind of my, my passion, I love it. But I need to watch that I'm if I'm spending a lot more time researching the game, researching my team, stuff like that, and just push God to the side as a, as a second place priority, that's where I'm letting his name fall a bit short. And so again, what, what's on your mind all the time? What are you thinking about that can sometimes be a distraction in which God's, God's A's in second place and not in first place? And we, we all fall short of that at many times. You see, valuing something above God is definitely not a new concept that only affects people like you and I in the 21st century today. In fact, it's, it's not new at all if we think back to early times. An example would be the golden calf, where Moses is up on Mount Sinai for a very long time, and the people of Israel are like, well, something must have happened to Moses, so he's not coming back, so let's build an idol and let's worship that idol because, you know, we feel that is our God, that that can be more reliable. Other, like Baal, the story of Elijah in the Old Testament, where they have this this contest, basically, about who is the true God. And all the prophets of Baal are trying to call down fire. Doesn't happen, doesn't happen. Elijah dumps water on his sacrifice and prays to God, and God sends fire from heaven. And so it shows that the prophets of Baal, those gods that they had, could not give the ability of have, giving them what they wanted. If we think of the Romans, the Greeks, what happened there oftentimes is they made their own gods, and, and those gods, while they thought they might have provided satisfaction for a little bit, those gods couldn't fully give them the life that the true God gave, and, and Paul helped them to recognize that. And In fact, Paul talks about, when he's talking to the Greeks in Acts, he's, he's telling them, you hold up this unknown god. It's like this unknown God, who is this? That they think they can bring satisfaction. And in fact, Paul says, I will tell you this unknown God, and it is the true God. And that is where he is able to spread the message of Jesus with them. But even today, we still hold things above God. And we still make God finish in, in last place oftentimes. I, I kind of laugh when I was preparing for this, I was thinking of a, of a commercial that happened. And there's an old Chevrolet commercial that comes out, came out in the 1970s. And maybe you've heard it before. It's the one that goes, baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. Kind of things that we love as Americans, that we hollow as Americans. I love baseball. I love hot dogs. I love apple pie. Never owned a Chevrolet before, but I'm doing pretty well. I'm three out of four on that one. <laughs> but the thing is, it, while it's while it's a fun commercial, and I'm not I'm not trying to poke at them for it, but the idea here is that's what we hollow as Americans: those things, baseball, apple pie, hot dogs, and Chevrolet. A lot of times, and and what are we hollowing in life? A lot of times, where where is God getting placed in our lives? You see, we hollow our cars. We got to have the latest and best car as an American. We hollow our sports teams. In fact, there's often times where we'll give more time to our sports teams than we'll give to God. We hollow our jobs where we hold up our, our jobs and we'll spend lots and lots of hours there but won't spend time in devotion to God. And God gets left behind. And we leave him in the shadows. And the thing is, we forget when we pray this petition, hallowed be your name, we forget what the name hallowed means. We forget it. And that, that is due to our sinful nature. 
But the thing is, and the most important thing that I want to take away tonight is who has God sacrificed for? Who does God love that much to sacrifice for? It's you and it's me. You see, we have been given the ultimate gift. We have. It's only through Jesus' life, his death, and his resurrection that you and I are eternally saved. We have been given a sacrifice so that we can have the gift of eternal life. God loves us that much to sacrifice for us. He loves us a ton. And one of the things he asks is that we bring glory to him. That we hallow his name. I want to turn to to Matthew 5. I think it's verse 31 here. Hope I have it right. I don't have it right. It actually is oh, 5 verse 16. I was in the right chapter, wrong verse. 5 verse 16, Jesus says in his Sermon on the Mount, he says, In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. See, it's not about us. It's not about us in this life, but God has given us this gift so that it can be bringing glory to him. We want to see glory come to God, that God gives us righteousness through his son. He gives us the gift of eternal life through his son. And now we have the ability to do good works, not for ourselves, not to win a salvation, not to say we are a great person by any means, but to ultimately bring glory to him like we see here in Matthew 5, 16. That ultimately the glory belongs to God, that we get to call him father, and that we can say, God, hallowed be your name. God, I hold your name above all other names because you have sacrificed everything for me. That's what we get to say. We just get the blessing to hallow God's name because he's given the ultimate price for us. So you see, the times where we mess up, the times where we fall short, the times where we put other things above God in our life, God has given Jesus as a sacrifice for our sins and for our shortcomings and for our shortfalls. Jesus has paid our ultimate price so that when we fall short of hallowing his name, that we can turn in repentance to him and Jesus covers us with his righteousness. You see, tonight we take away that that we are to hallow God's name and that we are to hold it above all other names. And we also take away that there are going to be times where we fall short. There are going to be times where we mess up. And in those situations, we lean on the faith that the Holy Spirit gives us in the death and resurrection of our Savior Jesus. We hold on to that sure promise, knowing that God has sacrificed everything for us and that he gave his life so that we can be clothed in the gift of his righteousness and that through our good deeds, not for salvation, the good deeds are not for our salvation to show how good we are or anything else, but then we have the ability to do those good deeds to bring glory, to bring hallowedness to our Father's name and bring that glory to our Father in heaven. So tonight we're going to have one more song right after this. And, and my hope and prayer for you this week going forth is that you and I together we would practice what it's like to hallow God's name. 
what's it like to talk to him each day and to to be able to say god father papa hallowed be your name i want to pray quick before we before we go on to the songs if, if you would pray with me please our father in heaven hallowed be your name God, we hallow your name above everything else. God, we honor you. God, we love you. God, we we do good deeds not for our glory, but to bring glory to you in heaven. And so, Father, thank you for sacrificing everything for us so that when we fall short, we can lean on the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to look for opportunities to hallow your name this week. And Lord, help us to continually hold your name above all names and continue to bring glory to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on! the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.